Good evening, a warm welcome to State of Business, RTV's Prime Time Business News Bulletin and I'm Rukshi Panditharatna. Let's take a look at the headlines first. <music> President launches 16 billion rupee viable canal project and an attempt to revive AG's report on central bank bond scam foiled. And today on Top Stories, President Maitripala Sirisena says all necessary steps will be taken to enhance the economy of the farmers. The President said this, speaking at a public meeting in Galevala after launching the Viber Canal project today. The Viber Canal project, which will minimize the difficulties faced by farmers due to the lack of water, is carried out with a contribution of Asian Development Bank. The project is estimated to cost around 16 billion rupees and is scheduled to complete in 2024. The groundbreaking ceremony for the stage one of the project was held under the patronage of President at the Way Madilla Left Bank's main canal. The President also presented title deeds to the people who have lost their lands due to the project for resettlement. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramsinghe left for Australia today on a four-day official visit. He will attend several events to mark the 70th anniversary of the diplomatic relations between Sri Lanka and Australia. The Prime Minister and his delegation will participate in bilateral discussion in Melbourne and Canberra with Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull and other ministers. A statement issued by the Prime Minister's office also said that several agreements will also be signed during these talks, strengthening relations between Sri Lanka and Australia. Leader of Democratic Left Front MP Vasudeva Nanayakara says there was an attempt to revive the Auditor General's report on central bank bond issue through a review committee of the Ministry of Economic Affairs. The veteran politician pointed out that only Parliament can revive the report and outside committees cannot do it. Let's take a look at more news after this break. Welcome back. Minister Ravi Karunanayak urged the police to intensify battle against drug menace in Colombo. Addressing the Colombo District Review Committee meeting, the minister requested the law enforcement officials to act fast. Deputy Minister Ranjan Ramanayaka asked the public to take full advantage of the Right to Information Act. Ramanayaka spoke to the media this afternoon after handing over a request to the Ministry of Media seeking some information. I don't know if I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it in the country. I'm going to do it in the parliament. I'm going to do it in the airport. I'm going to do it in the legal license. I'm going to do it in the valley permit, Galugal permit, Borulu permit, and bar permit. मैं सीलो देवल दानगान डे पुलवान तमुन ना आसला टे ते मगे मगे तोरो तोरो हैं एंड ऐहिंदा वात कम बेर कम मेक मै 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 क अपेराजे इन होरकांग करपु होरकांग करण्ड बलापुर तुएन होरकांग कुरोट करण्ड तीरकतावल यागन प्लान करंगी ना ऐटा लोको प्रश्न है क्यों मै जब मै उमावयत वैली संघार्य क्वेला दिनो एक इतनो 
ඒවත් තමුන්නාසලා ඉල්ලන්න පුළුවන්. Let's take a look at stocks after this break. Welcome back. The trading at the Colombo Stock Exchange closed in the green due to price gains in counters such as John Keyes Holdings, Dialog Asiata and Commercial Bank. The All Share Price Index gained 44.58 points to close at 6138.73 and the S&P SL20 gained 32.74 points to close at 3521.24. turnover was 785.1 million rupees and 11 million shares were traded crossings were witnessed in hatton national bank hemas holdings and john keys holdings mixed interest was observed in chevron lubricants while retail interest was noted in tokyo cement company meanwhile foreigners remained active closing as net buyers mainly due to foreign purchases in hemas holdings and john keys holdings total foreign purchases account for 82.4% of turnover let's take a look at days forex rates thank you for watching state of business see you tomorrow at the same time till then take care good night